Now let's talk about how to find the latent factors or equivalently how to solve the optimization problem that we mentioned before. Remember that our goal is to find the matrix P and Q such that we can minimize the following objective function. And this is the reconstruction error of the entries that we have known ratings. So here we actually don't care about the entries that we don't know anything about the ratings. And basically, ultimately we would want to uh, minimize the SSE or sum of square error for the unseen test data. But since this is practically impossible to do it directly, the idea is to minimize the SSE on the training data. And therefore we will want a large K where K is the number of factors to capture all the signals. But the problem is that when K gets too large, although the SSE on the training data may be very, very close to zero, but the SSE on the test data can begin to rise by a lot. And this is a classical example of overfitting. Basically with too much freedom, meaning we have too many free parameters, the model will start to fit the noise. That is, it fits the training data too well and thus it's not generalizing well to the unseen test data. For example, let's say that we have a lot of data points and the crosses here are the positive data points and the circles here are the negative data points. And let's say that we want to find a decision boundary that can split the positive data points and the negative data points. And when we have little flexibility on the decision boundary, we can see that it actually does a pretty poor job. It doesn't work very well. But if we have more flexibility on the decision boundary, we can see that it starts to fit the data pretty well and it ignores these two noisy data points, which is good. But when the model is actually too flexible, meaning that it has too many parameters, the model may fit not only the correct data distribution, but also the noise, which is this two noise here. And this is very bad. And though this learned model has, we can see that though this learned model has near optimal accuracy on the training data, it may actually perform worse on the test data. And this is a practical rule to detect whether overfitting has happened. Basically, if the model achieves near optimal accuracy on the training data, but when you look at the accuracy in the test data, it's very, very bad then we say that it starts to overfit. And to solve overfitting, we introduce regularization. Basically, this regularization will allow rich model where there are sufficient data and it will automatically shrink aggressively when the data are scarce. So basically to introduces regularization, the only thing we need to do is to, besides this original error term, we will add two additional regularization terms here. And we, we call this the error term, and we call these two terms the length term. And the lambda one and lambda two are what we call hyperparameters. And these are user set regularization parameters. Um, to give you more intuition, let's say that we have a user X and the corresponding factors are PX. And if this user X actually have rated a lot of movies, then correspondingly a large part of the value in this objective function will concentrate on the, on the first term. Therefore, when we're optimizing this objective function, the model will automatically focus on fitting the ratings of the matrix. But let's say that if this user actually rated only one or two movies, then in this case, a larger part of the value in this objective function will concentrate on this realization term. 
And therefore, in this case, the model, when we train it, it will automatically shrink the length or the norm of Px aggressively. And note that here, we actually don't care about the actual raw value of this object, uh, objective function. We only care about the P and Q, basically the, these two matrices here, that can achieve the minimum of the objective. And graphically, let's say that we have this, we have this user here, and if this user has rated, let's say, 100 movies, then we will, we will basically place these user factors, which is Px, around the movie that he or she has rated. But if this user only actually rated 10 movies, we will then shrink this Px a little bit. And if this user actually only rated one or two movies, we will shrink this Px even more. And remember that we ultimately want to find the matrices P and Q such that this whole objective function is minimized. And to do this, again, we can use gradient descent. And the basic steps are as follows. We will first initialize the matrix P and Q. For example, we can initialize it by randomly drawing the vectors or columns of P and Q from some normal distribution. And then we can do the gradient descent as follows. We will first calculate the gradient of this objective function with regard to P, and then we will update P using this equation. Basically, we will use P minus eta times the gradient to replace the original P. And we call this the updating rule or update rule for the vector P. And similarly, we can use this update rule to update the vector Q. And since this whole objective function, we can see that this is actually a quadratic function. Therefore, the gradient is actually in a very simple form. And we can calculate the gradient is using this equation and we will update the P and Q iteratively until they converge.